Well, hey, listen, it is great to have Brittany Toms here, who is the co-founder and president of C Spark Go, public relations agency. And so uh, we're, I'm excited just to kind of jump in and kind of hear your story. Uh, tell, you. me, tell me kind of what the inception is, what's the growth to get to this fantastic company. And then we're going to spend some time talking about the company as well. Oh, good. But, but kind of give me give me a little bit of background yes. on how this company came about. Oh, I love telling this story. And as storytellers, professionally, this is just the most fun topic. So thanks for having me on. Um, I actually started C Spargo with my husband. And he is a former pastor okay. at a church in Marietta, um, Georgia. And so when we got married, we tell people all the time we started a company for our marriage because he was working in ministry okay. uh, Sunday through Thursday. And I was working in corporate PR Monday through Friday and had several West Coast clients. Um, it was no thing for me to be on a seven o'clock PM Eastern conference call. And we just felt like, you know, God has given all of us incredible gifts and abilities. And he also has called us to use those gifts and abilities for others. That I told my 14-year-old son the other night, the purpose of work is to meet a need. Mm -hmm. And so Andy and I are kind of wrestling this first six, six months of marriage and thinking, what are we called to do in the name of the Lord? And, um, and we both just kind of had this aha moment, m mountaintop moment. We were hiking right. Kennesaw Mountain, oh. so really big. It was really, really a mountaintop mountain. moment. It was really okay. a mountaintop right. moment. Um, and we both felt like there's a freedom in Christ that even comes in your work. And we weren't, in, we weren't experiencing that freedom at that time. And so with the Lord's permission, we quit our jobs and moved to our alma mater of Athens, Georgia, huh. uh, home of the Bulldogs, the yeah, national absolutely. champions, you know? And so <laughs> it's been a fun journey over these last 15 years, um, living back in Athens and watching this um, company, this idea be birthed and grow and grow way beyond our wildest dreams or imagination, which I feel like is Ephesians 3.20. Like God does more with our yes than we can even ask or imagine. And so we just said yes to him in 2007. And so now, now Andy's a graduate of UGA as well. He is. And now what brings him into the pastoral route? Did, was, he, was he, I mean, I know that they don't have a ministry major at, at Georgia. <laughs> what, what brought, him, brought, up, what brought he, him into that area? He is actually a childhood and family development major, okay. which um, his dad said, if you learn people, you'll be successful in any industry. Absolutely. And um, that has just proven to be true. He's also, we're both serial entrepreneurs, both of our parents okay. were business owners. And so um, it wasn't scary for us to take that leap of faith um, back in 2007, even financially, or just the risk of being out on your own and okay. alone and not knowing where the income is going to come from. I think also being a person of faith helps with that. You know, you're we were just trusting. We right. Were young because for you to move from that point of having secure jobs, sure. although maybe not a great work-life balance, it sounds like, sure. but, but having secure jobs, pushing into that place where now you're starting your own business, mm -hmm. now the safety net is gone. Right. You know? Completely. Yeah. You're and on so, your knees so a lot. Walk me through kind of the nitty gritty of that. Just people listen to the show and, and yeah. what I, what I'm always telling, telling people is, you know, it's never too late. If you, if you don't, if you don't love where you're at, mm -hmm. then change, mm -hmm. you know? And, and if you're a kid, that seems a little bit more flexible to be able to do if you're a young adult. Uh, but that is true of 50 and 60 year olds. I mean, I know people who are changing careers in there. I, I've got a friend who changed their career at 71, went back and did another master's and changed their career. But for you to take that leap there, there's a, there's a, a risk, yeah. you know? So walk me through kind of the nitty gritty of what that looks like, not just from a business perspective, but also working with your spouse in that regard. Yeah, no. And it's not for the faint of heart. I mean, I think taking that leap um, and taking that risk, it, you know, you're not seeking easy. When right. you do that. I like that and, phrase. And I think when we seek easy or we seek the path of least resistance, then then we sometimes miss the joy of leadership. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Brittany. Well done. <laughs> um, I th you know, the, I tell people all the time, the best part is building a team and the hardest part is building a team and growing something beyond yourself. Um, <clears throat> but in those early years, the gritty is it was really, it was really tough we had opportunity, and, and I think opportunity is something that is given to you. We mm -hmm. had a few key folks that asked for work. They needed, they needed, a, they had a need, and mm -hmm. we met it. Um, 
And Andy is brilliant. My husband is the most brilliant strategist. He's such a, he's a pastor. He loves mm-hmm. people and building teams and speaking life into their giftings and things like that. And so, I mean, it was natural for him to be this, you know, operational HR, finance. Mm-hmm. He's just so gifted at business right. and strategy. And I just tell stories <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a good writer. So, you know, there's something there. Um, but we did a lot. We, we we called it anything for a buck at that day. Like, we're like, what do you need? We'll do it. Right, right. <laughs> so we promoted a book, um, a couple of different books, actually. We promoted a, like a, a golf training a, a range finder mm-hmm. that was kind of new to the market at the time. We promoted a nonprofit in in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, we promoted a branding agency. We were doing Nike 5K for kids. Mm. And we were doing all kinds of different random odd jobs. My husband actually worked in an insurance agency just to kind of help us meet make ends meet. I was wondering um, about that, like you know, because you you go from having income to sure. no income, right? So he's kind of closing the gap at this other place. Okay. He's closing the gap. I've got a little over here on this in this PR world, um, and we just we essentially thought that's a really good point. We thought that this was going to be a two year bridge to whatever was next. Um, that we were just going to dabble in a few things, get us to Athens, closer to family. And we'll see. We'll see what God does. And that has been the mo- the biggest gift is that opportunity. And I'm a firm believer that if you do really great work, it leads to opportunity to do more really great work. That's right. And so as That's we right. kept being faithful with what was in front of us, the clients that we had that had come to us, then we just kept getting opportunity to do more. Well, w- then we have to hire people. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we made our first hire, I think, in 2008 or nine. And second hire in 2009. And then it just started growing from there. Mm. And we were faithful with, again, our business growth strategy has just been to do really great work. I've, I've always said the same thing where, I, and I, I phrase it like, if you pursue excellence, mm-hmm. the success is simply a byproduct of excellence. Absolutely. And, and that's true in business. That's true in athletics. That's true in education. If you pursue doing something really well mm-hmm. and that, that you enjoy the really well, you enjoy the the process of making something that you're proud of, right. then then typically success follows, you know. Mm-hmm. So 15 years ago, this this whole thing kind of kicks off. Yes. And in, in this fast paced, crazy 15 years, you're now in Athens, Atlanta, and in California. Nashville, Tennessee. And Nashville? We, we, had, we had a California office pre-COVID. Okay. And we do not have that office okay. anymore. But you still have Nashville. But we still have Nashville. And okay. we actually have two two hubs in Atlanta, at, um, Grant Park area, South South Atlanta, East Atlanta, and then Alpharetta. Okay. For, that our, is awesome. for our OTP friends. Um, now, I, I, and I should have asked this at the beginning, the name of the company, C-Spark Go, which yeah. I, actually, I absolutely love. Thank you. Uh, as somebody kind of who grew up in the era of seeing Spot do other things, <laughs> uh, I'm interested with kind of the double entendre yeah. to that. But, Spot uh, ran. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and so, and so t- tell, me, tell me kind of where you guys came up with that. Yeah, the, I, I've always loved the word spark. Okay. I think the word spark is this catalytic ignition for something right. great. Um, and I think everybody has a spark, right. every story has a spark. I like that. Um, and so when we came up with the name, it was, it was kind of off of the C spot run idea of telling stories. And then we thought, well, we'll have a, a puppy dog bring you the greatest news of the day to your front porch. Right. Um, and so we have a dog as our logo, but our name is actually our process. So right, see, exactly. spark, right. and go are right. phases of work for us, and it works right. out it's really a name well. And it's a business mm-hmm. model, exactly, all, all in the same, which exactly. I, which I absolutely love. Thank you. So, so what does that growth look like? I mean, I've I've read some of the articles on you where you you and Andy you guys took on a hundred interns from UGA over yeah, the years. At like, this point, I think it's closer to two hundred. <laughs> wow, wow. So, so tell me what that growth looks like. How do you manage still maintaining a work life balance? I've had friends who started companies because they had a poor work life balance. Mm-hmm only to morph themselves into an even worse work-life balance, Absolutely. you know, when you're responsible for everything. So, so what does that look like as you're starting this really, you know, increasingly successful company? Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how do you find that balance? What does that growth process look like? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, I think our biggest job and our most important job is, is hiring well. And um, we have just the best team. I cannot 
I can't talk more highly of the team that we have in place in all of those cities that you mentioned. Um, across multiple disciplines, owned, earned, and paid media strategy. And we're doing for-profit work. We're doing nonprofit work. Um, we're telling literally the best stories in the world. I would put our agency roster, our client roster, against any other firm in the country. And I would say this is not only the best place to work from a culture standpoint, um, but it's the best place, it's the best stories to mm -hmm, tell. Mm -hmm. Like You're telling stories that really matter and make a difference in people's lives and make the world a better place. I mean, storytelling is what Jesus did. Right. And so we get to do that. We're, we're made in the image of a creator, and so we get to create um, and that's what we get to do all day, every day. And is it hard? Yes. Is it stressful? Yes. Are clients tough? Absolutely. Um, but the, it is such a privilege and a joy to get to serve them and, and to be and to serve them alongside people that get it, that right. are on mission. And right. that's what I can say about our team. And that's the best part. Like the bigger the team has gotten, yes, sure, more people, more problems. But there's also this like, dance of everybody's got a part to play and mm -hmm. and so you get more specialized and you can lean on each other's shoulders and you're not doing it alone um, you're in fact you're standing on each other's shoulders and right. that's where I think the growth comes from like the the bigger you are the smaller you get which is great one of the greatest joys that I have is just I have a leadership team here remarkably talented men mm -hmm. and women uh, and just being able to be a part of their lives. And we were in a staff meeting just yesterday, and we always begin our staff meeting with a devotional, and we were just getting deep into this devotional. And just to have the, the table involved in this, in this uh, back-and-forth discussion, and, and really as I was looking at them, I was picturing this beautiful idea where here every person at the table is responsible for a different facet of what we do, mm -hmm. uh, and yet we were all united in Christ. Like I just, I love that idea that, that there's this central idea. So, so building into our staff, mm -hmm. uh, I know that a number of things that I read on on you and Andy were that you really mentioned stewardship a lot. That mm -hmm. you you steward your people. So mm -hmm. you're not just stewarding finances; you're stewarding talent. Absolutely. Uh, are there ways that you're developing your team really specifically that? That, that you guys find really works, not just in your sphere of influence, but also in kind of the rest Absolutely. of business? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, Pastor Andy has a lot to do with it. He really should be here on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's so gifted with the people and the team. And um, and I try to coach every now and then <laughs> on storytelling. But I, what one of the things that I think has made us really successful from a leadership standpoint, and that I think every other company or organization could adopt and is our meeting cadence and our internal communication is really strong. And if you are looking to grow anything, the internal comms and the health of your communication with your team is imperative. Um, we have so many one-on-ones hearing people, how are you doing? What do you need? What, what do you need more of, less of? What can we do better at in serving you? I mean, just asking questions. It's like, Counseling 101. I like <laughs> you know, that. Being curious. So right. we're very curious. Well, and, and you mentioned you mentioned the term coaching as well. Yes. That Andy's doing a lot of coaching. And, and that's such a big part of leadership. Mm -hmm. We may not have phrased it as that 15 or 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, but but the, really the idea of coaching up is a huge part. And so mm -hmm. you guys do that on an individual basis. That's a real strength right. of your model. Right. And and we meet in in cohorts too. We have a we have a leadership team meeting. We have um, group accounts, team meetings, we have service area huddles, and, we, and then we do a staff meeting twice a month, mm -hmm. and then we get gather the whole company from all four offices um, two to three times a year. Okay. And we're actually getting ready to take everyone to the Porsche driving experience nice. in Atlanta for Christmas nice. this year, and we're I super excited. I received that excited. last Christmas from my kids, and we still haven't been yet. <laughs> oh, but you need yeah, to go. Yeah, I need to go. I know. Yeah. I, I will squeeze it in at some point in time. Well, we're gearing up. You know, it's our 15 years. We're gearing up for our sweet 16 next year. Okay. And so we're getting our driver's license, so everything has a theme and a purpose. <laughs> I like that. It's even in the company, I like that. Yeah. Um, now, take me to, you mentioned meeting cadence as well. Yes. Explain to me a little bit what, what you mean by that. Just uh, the regularity with which we meet. Okay. So every Monday at 845, you can expect your group area, group accounts, huddles. Um, at 945, leadership team meets. At, at 
1030, the executive team goes over the finances of the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so consistent and, and we all know exactly what to expect and what we're supposed to bring to those tables and to those meetings. And then the service area huddles happen throughout the week. Um, there's various leadership, you know, cohorts that gather committee meetings, things like that. And it's just, it's so regular, mm -hmm. um, but so productive. It's not death by meeting. It's right. at, we look forward to it. We all know that we're on mission. It keeps everybody aligned. As we grow, it's going to be imperative. Are you guys taking those, those ideas from any particular business models, any particular business psychologists or or philosophers? Oh, like I wish we it had. sounds very Patrick Lencioni ish. Sure. I don't know if, you, yeah, if you're familiar. We are. With We've done the five dysfunctions of team yeah, and yeah. love love the table group. Um, we know, but I will say in 2017, we had, so we're 10 years old at this point, we had um, maybe a dozen full-time W-2 employees. And we took everybody on a cruise, our 10-year celebration, that's what we did kind of to, to commemorate that. Um, and it was a little hairy, just the, the size at that point. It felt bigger than just Andy and I could handle. And at the same time, growing beyond us feels scary, things like that. And so I went on what I call the CEO tour. And I just started booking a meeting with CEOs of different PR firms all across the country. If I could find them on LinkedIn, if they were someone I had read about, I just LinkedIn messaged them and asked if I could grab 30 minutes with them. And so many people were generous with their time. We've been mentored by other firms in the area. Jackson Spalding, Glenn Jackson has been very generous with us, just helping us think through strategy and growth. Um, and I just big believer that without, you know, Plans fail without counsel, many mm -hmm. counselors. And so we've sought tons of advice from other people who have been there before us. Um, and those people, one of the things that came out of that was this idea of a, of a matrix model. And so we, what we did at that in 2017 was we matrixed the organization. So we have service area experts across all teams. Mm -hmm. And then we have vertical leadership that groups those teams together and makes them almost like a, a mini Chick-fil-A. If you're trying to like rubber stamp Chick-fil-A's great, brilliant model, mm -hmm. um, we're creating a little bit of like an owner operator mentality of you, you lead this team and this group of accounts and this group of people, but you do it the C-Spark go away. And we've got systems and processes that help undergird that effort. And so the model is hopefully that we can scale to a fourth team and a fifth team. And a sixth team, as, as far as the Lord has in store for us. That is great. I yeah. love that. So it, it's almost like that, uh, like Henry Ford, you know, Model A or Ray Kroc McDonald's kind of mentality where you're going to do everything the same way. Right. Yeah. And people know what to expect. I mean, right. what is a brand right. if it's not what other people say it is? So for other people to say the same thing with every experience at C-Spark Go, then we have to get really intentional about the customer experience at C-Spark Go. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be consistent. So we have two words that we kind of are rally cry. And it's relationships and results. Because without relationships, strong, healthy, robust, thriving relationships, then it's just a transaction. Mm -hmm. And without results, we're just friends. That's right. So we have to have both. So those are our two guiding flags. Guiding principles, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're guiding principles. And they what really, if you break down all of our core values, they break down into those two words, you know. I'll tell you, I, I love the idea that you're you're also just, you're respecting kind of what every person brings to the table and still making sure that they meet the model of C-Spark Go. Uh, I'll, I'll throw this out there just because you're, you're clearly into the business, but with Patrick Lencioni, he put something out almost two years ago, The Working Genius. Yes, we've have done that too. Have you already done it? Okay, good. We, we're like assessment junkies. Yeah, it's just, I, I have found, you know, I, I've i always had these ones where it measures individuals. And sometimes it's interesting and it goes on a shelf. But The Working Genius has really helped me define my, my leadership team right. to see where our talents are. Our last two hires that we made on our leadership team, as a matter of fact, we made because of their match on the working genius and it really worked well. That's you know, awesome. Pretty cool. So, all right. So tell me, tell me how is it working with your husband all day long? <laughs> uh, I, I also work with my wife. We're, we've been in ministry together oh, our whole great. career. Yeah. Uh, we've just made that determination mm -hmm. and uh, we will oftentimes hear from people like, I can't believe you work with your spouse all the time, but <laughs> tell, tell me how that works for you guys. Is that well, a good, good dynamic? How you know, work? and going back to what you, something you just said earlier too, which also leads into working with your spouse is, um, 
our buddy Chris Carneal at Boosterthon Fun Run. I don't know if you guys yeah, have ever sure. used yeah. Boosterthon here at Hebron, but you should. Um, they're fantastic. And, and he says, you got to know yourself to lead yourself. Mm-hmm. And then th- the follow up to that is you have to know others to lead others. Right. And so this idea of assessing and understanding how you're wired and, and how you're made, that is so true for working with your spouse, true. Too. So we um, call ourselves affectionately refer our, to ourselves as spousepreneurs. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I like that. You could coin that one. That's really I know. good. I uh, like thank that. you. <laughs> um, and and I am. I know exactly what I bring to the table, and I know where my weaknesses are, and I know what Andy brings to the table and what his That's weaknesses right. are. And so he, we complement each other. And I think when we are healthy, when we're full, whole, and healthy spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Um, then we appreciate those differences That's right. and we see them as incredible gifts. If you ever read Gina Wickman's Traction, which is kind of an entrepreneur mm. operating system, um, he he de- describes this uh, need for any business to have rocket fuel in order to, to grow. And rocket fuel is made up of a visionary and an integrator. And when those two things come together, then you really can take off. Mm-hmm. And so I think C. Spargo got it, it ordained it this way is he put me and Andy together mm-hmm. so and you we're had those two components. opposite, <laughs> but right. we have those two components and sometimes we swap out on those, mm-hmm. but we understand it. And because we understand it and we'll, again, when we're full, whole and healthy, we appreciate it. Right. Sometimes right. we don't, <laughs> but that just means that we're not right. healthy as, as individuals. Now, um, as I read through your, some of the companies that you've, that you guys have worked with, I noticed a number of UGA connections like mm-hmm. your pie. It, yeah. That, flow, that flowed directly out of UGA, if I remember. It did. Actually, Natalie French, um, Drew and Natalie French founded Your Pie Pizza. And um, Natalie was my sorority sister. Oh, very mm-hmm. cool. That is awesome. Yeah, I, I read their story a while ago and that stuck with my head. Are, are there any other Are there any other clients? Like, is UGA a connection for you with a lot of your clients? Um, Let me think. I'll, I have to, like, Go th- put the roster in front of me. We've worked a lot with the University mm-hmm. um, of Georgia. So we've done yeah. work for finance and administration. We've done work for student affairs. We've done work for auxiliary. We The golf course, like all kinds of different projects here and there. Um, and I love getting to be in proximity mm-hmm. to the university because the Alumni Association right. has been really great to us. Um, obviously, the Grady School of Journalism and the Terry College of Business have provided ample students for our internship program that is housed right, right there in Athens. Um, but our client roster really started growing. We we were blessed to work to open Nike stores in 2008, mm-hmm. 9, 10, and I think on to 2016. And from there, one of our one of our strong relationships that worked at Nike World Headquarters in Portland moved over to Columbia Sportswear, and we started opening in Columbia oh, Sportswear cool. stores. So we've had a lot of relationships over the years that bleed into each other. So we started working with Mutual of Omaha in 2010, okay. 2009, 2010. And that was a, a huge blessing. We ran a, a six-year advertising campaign called the AHA Moment Tour, Mutual of Omaha. Mm. And it was such a such a creative campaign, but they took an Airstream travel trailer and gutted it and turned it into a mobile television studio. And we took this trailer across the country and we asked people to share their AHA moments on camera and turned them into nationally televised ads. Oh, cool. And it was such a fun campaign. And, and maybe two or three years into that, we started talking to the marketing team at Airstream. So then we're, we're working with Airstream and telling their story on social media. So everything is relationships and everything is results. And I, I, just as I went through the companies that I was looking at, Fabric, Your Pie, uh, um, Airstream, All Pro Dads. I mean, just looking at some of those, some of those businesses mm-hmm. are such unique and novel stories in and so of cool. themselves. Yeah. I just thought it was like, you know, when I was reading about you, it said, Hey, I, you know, we started our business so that we could choose the stories. Yep. And I was intrigued just to see that each of those stories, they are very novel. They you know? are. They're yeah. so fun. And and I every Andy used to laugh at me when we were in the early days because I would go to a client meeting and I would leave that client meeting so excited. And I would say, I want to work for them full time. <laughs> like, <let's, laughs> we're going to close these part go and we're going to go work for them. And then I'd go to the next client meeting and say the exact same thing. <laughs> and so I think I was truly born to work in an agency setting where right. we get to tell so many different stories of so many different right. brands and industries. And the thing I love about that, those clients is they, 
what we learn from one, we are able to apply to another. Right. And so people that hire CSPART Go, they're getting this ins- this level of insight that we look under the hoods of so many different industries and so many different brands and leaders, CEOs, and how to manage them and how to tell their story and how to help them communicate better internally, things like that, that I think it's a huge benefit to any one of our clients that our company roster is strong, that right. we are telling great stories. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Um, All Pro Dad put on a dad, at All Pro Dad Live here in um, Gwinnett County, I think, in hmm, maybe 2017. I, c- I can't remember the dates exactly. Maybe before that. And Coach Mark Richt spoke, and we got to do the PR for that. And it led into having a long-term relationship with All Pro Dad and Family First down mm-hmm. in Florida. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. So now in, in, in this kind of process where God has been blessing, uh, he's bringing about increase financially and in all of those different pieces, I'm intrigued to where the areas where you've chosen to give back. So tell me a little bit about oh, some, of the, some of the agencies that you have chosen, you and Andy have chosen to really give back to. I know Eagle Ranch is in that list, yes. but kind of walk me through some of those things as well. Oh, I love that you asked that. Thank you. I, you know, that is something that I think has been a real gift to me and Andy is to not only be choosy of the clients that we get to tell, but also where we give our time and our resources um, and what we introdu- introduce our children to. We have two boys, they're 11 and 14. And so there's just things that are close to our hearts and and kids and Education and really creating safe, loving environments for children is so important Mm -hmm. um, at these critical years that my husband has been on the board of Downtown Ministries in Athens, Georgia for a long time. I think he just rolled off last year as board chair, and he adores that ministry. I mean, they are doing some incredible work creating safe, loving, Christ-filled environments for Mm -hmm. children in Athens. Um, and then Eagle Ranch is so dear to my heart. I actually just had a board meeting yesterday. Is he really? Okay. Yes, sir. And and they are doing remarkable work that is life changing. Right. If you can intercept a child in middle school, that's right. Which is a crucial time. And right. even if they are, even if they're in a loving home, there's something about structure and safety. And if they're having a hard time to get them into this environment where it's therapeutic where there's um, spiritual counseling, spiritual formation, there's education, and um, home life, it's it's really phenomenal what the result is and what God does mm. through that ministry and has done for 37-plus years. That's great. And then, now, do you guys stay involved in your church as well? Is that, yes. Yeah. And, yep. and what do you guys choose to do in, in that? Is that still skill set related? Or <laughs> do you have to market your church no. when you're there? Or? No. And, in fact, I would tell anybody this. Do not freelance in your vocation right? <laughs> or don't, don't, um, give your, don't side hustle mm-hmm. in what you do nine to five like that. It's just a recipe for burnout in my right. opinion. So we don't, we, um, we have led small groups in the past. We're actually taking a hiatus from leading small mm-hmm. groups right now. Um, but we attend Athens church cool. and have since 2004. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've been attended there, there since many the beginning times. Yeah. and so. love them so much. Very, very cool. Um, any specific business practices that we haven't discussed today that are important for an audience? Our, our audience, uh, we tend to be younger and a little bit older, but obviously my field is working with kids. And so often we talk about our nonlinear path. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and is there any kind of advice that you would give in regard to that for, for you know, learning how to step into that unknown, which you, have, you and Andy have clearly done? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, for me, I think it is being open and, and being a little bit entrepreneurial with everything that you're doing. Like the sky's the, the sky is the true limit. You know, there is no limit to what you can do career wise, what your team or staff can do, um, here in, in this organization. Um, we try to use the word permission a lot. You have permission to innovate to create, to come up with ideas, to um, identify problems, you know, to bang the table if you need to. Like there, there is tremendous permission to be authentic mm-hmm. and to bring your full self to work. Right. And if there's something else you want to do, great. So we hire on four C's, character, competence, chemistry, and calling. And what we learned early on is that you can be a person of high character 
high competence and high chemistry and your calling can be different. Right. And that's okay. And my friend Tyler says, you just better come tell me that your calling has changed before I have to tell you. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Which I really appreciate, but cause you can tell if someone's, if it's not hand in glove, if there's not this like drive and motivation and get to and excitement, um, you know, one of our core values is that is enthusiasm wins. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe it because the root word of enthusiasm is in theos, which means mm -hmm. God within. And so if you're not excited, you're not invited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you got to get excited about the work that you're doing. And if you're not, find out why. Do you need to take a break and take a rest? Is there sabbatical and Sabbath are very real in our world and in our day-to-day -day lives? And Sabbath is just a micro version of a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do that every single week. That's a gift God's given us every single week. So we try to talk about that with our team too. And we try to be upfront too. Our faith framework is how we're going to lead and operate our life. That might not be where all of our employees sit, and that's fine. They're on a journey, and God has them where, exactly where he wants them, and they're going to do exactly what he's called them to do. And we just get to be um, observers of that, stewards of that in some ways, and, and platform givers, platform builders. Um, so full, whole, and healthy, calling, drive, all of those things are important so I, to us. I've appreciated so much. Um, I will meet with people sometimes, and I, I almost think it's it's almost accidental excellence. Like there are some people who are just, uh, they're talented uh, and they're doing good work, mm -hmm. but in some cases they don't know why. And, and frankly, I've really, I mean, I'm just impressed with the fact that you're doing good work, you and Andy, but you also know why, that you have these cultural mm -hmm. aspects that define your business, that define why you're doing them. Mm -hmm. You know, the other piece that I'm intrigued with is that so much of what I've read about you, and, and certainly this has proved true today, uh, so much is, is an optimistic uh, attitude. Sure. Uh, and I, I suspect <laughs> that's, that's probably a pretty large framework of what you mm -hmm. do. Tell me a little bit about uh, uh, kind of your perspective on optimism versus pessimism, yeah. uh, particularly as I'm looking at my younger, my younger audience, as they're looking at kind of what frames them for success for the future. Tell me a little bit about that, because clearly you jump into it with a very optimistic yeah, perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So the best is yet to come. This too shall pass. Okay. You know, those are kind of my, two of my go-tos. In fact, I was at a conference one time, and and this this gentleman looked at me, and he goes, Brittany, the best is yet to come. And I looked back at him and said, always. <laughs> and he made a, an, a, a metal bracelet that said, the best is yet to come, dot, 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 always. That's awesome. Like, that promise is right. always. Right. It is forever that right. the best is yet to come. And so the fact that we're getting to build and create and dream up God's got this. That's like right. he's got the whole world. It's That's cliche. Right. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah. And and there is nothing that is going to thwart his purposes. Right. And so our job as as believers is to just get on the train because right. it's going somewhere That's and right. and be stewards of the gifts that he's given you. And and when we that that frankly is such a byproduct of our faith mm -hmm. that when we can really trust in something that is bigger than us, mm -hmm. when we can really trust in a God who loves us, who created us with a purpose, then then we can have such confidence in stepping into things that might be scary or stepping mm -hmm. into opportunities that we believe yep. is his will. And yet it takes courage to step into that, mm -hmm. that we can do it when we have confidence in, in who our creator is and how he is guiding our life, you know, exactly. which is such a vital perspective. Brittany, hey, it has been such a Thank pleasure you. to talk with you uh, <laughs> and just to learn about your passion and uh, you have an infectious personality. Thank you. Love just talking to you. And I'm excited to see where uh, your company grows and goes in the years to come. Thank you so much for jumping on the show. I love it. Thank you so much. It has been a true pleasure. Thank and you. A gift.